Scott Carey. Scott Carey, please report to the Deminiaturization Briefing Room. <laughs> A new communications super network is being built before our eyes. Spaceship Earth glows with billions of interactions, carrying news and information at the very speed of light. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Epcot Center is proud to present over the World Showcase Lagoon. Surprise in the sky. W Radio. Your information station. Hello, my friend, and welcome to the WW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. I am your host, Lou Mangiello, and this is show number 697, and together, as we have been since 2005, we're going to celebrate the magic of the Disney parks, movies, Marvel, Star Wars, and more here on the podcast, my weekly live video on Facebook, events, blog, and more. Please be sure to join the community, subscribe to the podcast, and find everything else at www.radio.com. So to celebrate the spirit of the holiday season and help you enhance your enjoyment and appreciation of the Disney parks and resorts during the holidays, this week we share our top 10 ways to celebrate the holidays in Walt Disney World. From classic traditions to new favorites, we'll look at what to do, where, why, and how, including some of our best of the best must-dos that maybe you've never tried or even heard of before. Then stay tuned for our Disney Trivia Question of the Week where you can enter to win a special Disney prize package and more updates and your voicemails at the end of the show. And if you like what you hear, please share the show and tell a friend. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the WW Radio Show. With the holiday season in full swing in Walt Disney World, because it's early November and the holidays literally begin overnight, thanks to the magic that happens on Halloween night as November 1st, the parks have transitioned to Christmas time. It is the perfect time to look at some of our favorites, maybe even overlooked, ways to celebrate the holidays in Walt Disney World. From classic traditions to new favorites, we'll look at what to do, where, when, why, and how, including some personal sort of best of the best specific must-dos that maybe you've never tried or even heard of before. And because there's so much, we're going to look at our top 10-ish ways to celebrate the holidays in Walt Disney World. And when you hear top 10 and the holidays, you hopefully don't think of little Timmy Foster dressed in his holiday onesie waiting to sit on Santa's lap at the King of Prussia Mall like he did last year, but instead... You think of little Timmy Foster joining me once again. One's the optional. Little Timmy Foster, welcome back, my friend. All right, number one, not last year. Last week I was at the King of Prussia Mall <laughs> sitting on Santa's lap. And do you think of me in a onesie? So I try not to. It's it's okay. it's Halloween nightmares. Um, is King of Prussia Mall even still open? Not only is it open, it is bigger and better than ever. It's like if Walt Disney World were inside, I think that's what it would look like. So that's where I go to get my Disney magic on. You Santa's just, there. The trees are there. <laughs> so did you just say if Walt Disney built a mall, it would be King of Prussia? No, 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 no. <laughs> if Walt Disney World were inside, I have the street. You're walking down Main Street, but it's like a mall. And that door goes to Small World. And that that's This is what it would look like. It sounds like a very different mall than when I was attending Villanova University. See, However, I hit... I hit go with me here before we even got started. <laughs> I'm sure it's not the first, nor shall it be the last. Nope. But look, there is so much to do and to get into the holiday spirit or your holiday onesies. And going to Walt Disney World, I think, is like going to Walt Disney World at any time. Because there's no way that you can see and do and eat at all, despite your best efforts. But... There are some must-dos every time and things that maybe you haven't thought of trying once, and that's why we're here to help. 
again because this is not our first foray into the holiday season, Timmy Foster. Back on show number 44. Like, that's a long time ago, brother. I'm not going to let you. Whoa. Yeah. Top 10 holiday moments in Walt Disney World. In show 96, Ooh. we talked about Ye old Christmas Shop. In show 150, we talked about the best of the best Christmas in Walt Disney World. We've done the history of Christmas at Walt Disney World on show 467. And the guide to the holidays at Walt Disney World, 10 things you need to see, do, and eat back on show 502. I'm going to link to all those in the show notes. But this is something different, right? Because we want to, we, because you, there's so much to do that Disney puts into the parks and resorts and Disney Springs during the holidays. Like I said, you can't do it all. And I think sort of helping people figure out top 10-ish things is going to be really helpful. So we never discuss these ahead of time. And I'm very curious, because you are my guest and my friend, to hear what is number one on your holiday list of things to do. Go. Besides the onesie and Santa's lap and all that? Again, it's a family show. Okay, so I am going to go. Well, we'll start with the big one. I'm going to go to the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. We're about to go in a few weeks. But here are the things I'm looking forward to this year that I haven't done yet. Uh, Because there's the usual. There's the the parades and the fireworks and shows, which we all know about. There's a a few attractions I'm anxious to see. Because I haven't experienced these before during the holidays. I'm not sure that these are new this year or I just didn't pay attention. But over in Tomorrowland, of course, Space Mountain is all decked out in its Christmas goodness. I will confess, I'm usually not one to go on the Tomorrowland Speedway because it's the Speedway. It's noisy. It's slow. And I'd rather go on the TTA. But I actually would really love and I hope I get the chance to get on the Tomorrowland Speedway Race Through the Holidays overlay, which will be going on this year. And it should be a lot of fun. It's at night, so you have Christmas lights. There's going to be all these displays with presents and holiday decorations. And like last time, hopefully it'll be the case. Maybe they'll light up Tron, which is amazing to see at night while they're still working on it. But again, I haven't been on the Tomorrowland Speedway during the holidays and frankly in a long time. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And when I'm done that, I'm going to head over to the Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor because they're also going to do a Christmas themed show with Christmas jokes and that sort of thing. And Lou, I've got my joke lined up. The one you text in ahead of time. So and you... my trick is I say, I say I'm Timmy. I'm six yes. from Philadelphia <laughs> with the hope that they'll get my joke on. Cause they usually see mine. but this is my joke. So I'm going to try it out on you and tell me what you think. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm laughing already just at the mere thought of this, but go ahead. Why is a cat in the desert like Christmas? Why is a cat in a desert like Christmas? I'm frightened and have no idea. Because they both have sandy claws. Oh! Ah! That'll get me on. Will it? No. <laughs> no. It, you know what? It probably is the perfect joke to get you on. Such a monster, Saint Laugh Lord. It is a monster. By the way, Tim is a dad, in case anybody that's, did not yeah, put that true. together, right? <laughs> But uh, and last thing we're going to do on Mickey's Mickey's very merry Christmas party. We have a weird little family tradition going. So at at after hours parties, we've taken to finding the the exclusive party hot dog. I know it's weird. It started when we went to the villains after hours party a couple of years ago. And my daughter got the Hades hot dog, which was a buffalo sauce and a black bun and everything else. And at the not so scary Halloween party just now, we had the pain and panic hot dog. So, Hey, we're going to go for the trifecta. When we get to Mickey's very Merry Christmas party, we're going to head to Casey's corner. It sounds weird, but I want to get that holiday dinner dog that has cranberry mustard stuffing funnel cake and cheese curds. I don't know. It sounds weird, but I'm going for it. So, are you with me? Are you up for a holiday? Uh, hot Tim, there's, there's a part of me that wants to just follow you guys around and live stream it almost <laughs> as like a pay-per-view type of event. Just following hmm. the Fosters through Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. It's <laughs> it's the holiday season tradition you never knew you needed. That's right. We put our own little spin on it. Yes. Yes. And you. Yes. But listen, <laughs> that's part of the fun, right? We all have yep. our quirks and idiosyncratic things that we love to do or traditions in the parks. And that's some of the things I think that we're probably going to 
talk about and share. And yes, ask you, our friend, the listener, that's sitting here with us, hopefully not eating one of those weird hot dogs. We're going to want you to contribute and share yours as well. For me, Tim, you know, when I was thinking about this list, you know, you start by just sort of brain dumping ideas and you're talking about the parties and the trees. And, and I said, you know, I, I've, I wanted to look at some of the more overlooked experiences, uh, however small. And I'm going smaller as opposed to larger because I want to talk about some of the things specifically that you can do while you're there, whether it's things that I have done before, things that I, I'm hoping to do in the future or things that just are a little bit different and fun because you can't necessarily see and do and possibly even afford it all. So one of the things that I've done in the past, and this is something that I really try and do twice a year seasonally. Uh, I just did it with some friends during Halloween because they were staying there. And I and I love doing it during Christmas. And the first thing that came to mind on my list, and I, and I would normally say, or go rent a golf cart at Fort Wilderness to go see the holiday decorations. But I believe right now you can no longer do that unless you're staying there. So stay there. And this is what my sort of one way to celebrate the holidays might be because you might not necessarily think about it. When I say to stay at, <clears throat> excuse me, Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort, you don't have to pitch a tent or rent a camper. Both sound fun. I will eventually do. And of course, live stream it when it happens because God only knows. But here's a fun <laughs> holiday idea that you might not have never thought about before. So during the holiday season, rent a cabin. Rent a cabin at Fort Wilderness, even if it's just for a couple of days. Again, Christmas starts in Walt Disney World around November as you start to get closer. <clears throat> Sorry. Obviously, those that decorate their campsites. And it's like Halloween, Tim. I mean, it's it's this incredible display of individual campers and campsites, some of whom stay there for months at a time. It's like an attraction in and of itself. So rent a cabin and look again, rate right in November, December, they fluctuate certainly as you get closer to Christmas. I saw rates around $500 a night and that's for an entire cabin. It's a queen bed, a bunk bed, a sleeper sofa. You've got great views, but the trick is that when you stay there and if you want to camp and pitch a tent, even better. You can rent a golf cart. You can rent a golf cart for about, <clears throat> excuse me, 65 to $75 a night. And that's the best, most fun way to explore Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and campground because the, it, you can fit about four people or so on there and tour the entire campground at night to see the holiday decorations. Some of these displays are spectacular. I will try and link to the last video, the live video that I did when we went one night and drove around and, and the one that we just did for Halloween because it really is an attraction. And so I think to sort of summarize, the thing that I would do is rent a, rent a cabin at Fort Wilderness, rent a golf cart, and I suggest renting them in advance because they do go every night, although you can get the unreserved ones first come first serve basis. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tour the Christmas decorations and... While you're there, you must, you must go see the Hoopty Doo musical review. That is a fun day or a couple of days or nights at Fort Wilderness that I think everybody should do at least once during the holiday season. Oh, I love that. I, I sort of had that on my list, too. So I'll just piggyback off what you said. We did this once before, and I did check they are running them again if you don't if you if you want to stay at your Grand Floridian Resort all week long and don't want to do that, um, they are doing the holiday sleigh rides again. This I was year. just going to say just, I had that on I my just list. Checked. I forgot to mention it. Yeah, yeah, I just checked this year, and they are running. I guess in December, we're going soon, but they're not available quite yet. But it looks like in December, holiday sleigh rides are there, and we've done that. And like you said, it's like it's like drive. It's like going around your neighborhood the, the night when you go around and look at everybody's lights in your car, mm -hmm. right, like right before Christmas, and. Um, I, <laughs> they're beautiful, like you said. I, I do kind of call foul on the ones that have Shrek up in the front lawn, because. <laughs> but you know, the but they they're amazing. And the, speaking of Christmas lights, the other thing that's fun if you're staying at other resorts is to, particularly at the DVC resorts where you have people that are there for a while. A lot of those people will 
decorate their balconies and windows mm-hmm. and stuff. Not to the degree that you'll see in Fort Wilderness, but that's fun to see too. Because uh, I know the first time I saw it, it was kind of I was expecting that at all. It was it was kind of out of the blue, but there it was and pretty festive. So. And the, the yeah, so the, holiday sleigh rides are, are fun too. You yeah, know. again, reserve those in advance. They're about seventy five dollars, yeah. and you can fit four or five adults and and small kids. Again, I've done that during Halloween time. I've never done it during Christmas, but now as soon as we're done with this call, I'm going to see if I can reserve one for December. Yeah, hurry up! But I'm we're just missing them. So, uh, well, you, Lou, you'll have to drive us around in a golf cart when we get down. <laughs> Are we counting that as mine, or do I have another one to go here? That that was sort of no that 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 wasn't yours. That was sort of a mishmash of <laughs> uh, Let's see where will I go? Oh, okay. I'm going to do this. Uh, this is me adding. I'm going to add a new tradition to our holiday touring at Walt Disney World, and I'm I'm going to add a new element, and I'm going to add the Skyliner in mm. to our holiday touring plans. And I, we're going to do this when we go. And my my vision is we're in World Showcase. And we're going to talk about Epcot more, I'm sure, before this night is over. But touring World Showcase in the evening, doing some holiday storytellers, getting some, getting some wonderful food, and then taking the Skyliner over to the studios. And once you're there, uh, I always feel like the studios, Main Street, gets all the well-deserved love for that nostalgic Christmas feel. But sometimes we forget Hollywood Boulevard has its own nostalgic Christmas. A little different, but it's wonderful too. So I'm thinking from Epcot going to Skyliner, which is beautiful at night, and end up at the studios, and then experience that old-fashioned Christmas with with those old porcelain ornament figurines of Santa and the reindeer and everything that that, uh, you grew up with. Uh, The the old Christmas carols, kind of like they do on Main Street, but with this Hollywood twist. And and spend some time at Hollywood Studios, because, like I said, we usually all go to the Magic Kingdom and Epcot, but Hollywood Studios does do a lot of wonderful Christmas decorations, and and they light up that Tower of Terror, too, with some cool projections, which I might talk about later. But that's going to be my new Christmas tradition is to combine those two parks and join them up with the Skyliner for a wonderful Christmas ride in this guy. So I love that because I agree with you about Disney's Hollywood Studios. You know, it's funny, Tim, when it first opened, it was characterized as the half day park because that's what, yeah. in fact, it was designed as. And even so, for some people, even with the addition of Galaxy's Edge and some of the other things, it's not necessarily one that people put first on their list or their favorites, but I do love it any time of the year, specifically for what you mentioned. I'm a sentimental nostalgic, and I love bygone days, and I love the 30s and the 40s for a variety of reasons. I love the way the studios feels. I love the way it looks. I love the sounds. I love the music. I love standing on Sunset Boulevard and just listening to that big band era music from a much, much simpler um bygone day that that part of me wishes I lived in sometimes. (laughs) But during the holidays, you're right. The decorations that they put up are ones that, mind you, I wasn't alive in the 30s and 40s, but, you know, growing up with going to Christmas and and weekends at at my grandmother's house and seeing those sort of plastic, sort of, those sort of blown plastic uh, decorations of Rudolph and the red and silver and green tinsel and garland that line the streets and the, the the temperature of the light at night, that sort of yellow temperature gives you a sense that you really have stepped back in time. And then when it snows on Sunset Boulevard, I'm with you a thousand percent. I, I think Hollywood Studios is beautiful during the holidays. And even if you're not going for one of the special events or other things that we may touch on tonight, there's a lot of reasons just to go and visit that park. And even during the day, just walking down Hollywood Boulevard and seeing how the windows are dressed. You know, I think about those ornaments that look like the Rockettes sort of dancing girls in in the Hollywood Mm -hmm. Five and Dime. It's just simple and it's subtle and it's beautiful. And again, that old holiday music playing through the studios is is just wonderful. And you don't need anything more than a park ticket to enjoy it. No. And Gertie the Dinosaur wears a Santa hat. (laughs) So you know what? I'm gonna either <laughs> I'm gonna piggyback on yours or or sort of append to yours with 
Another one that was very, very high on my list and something that I haven't done in years and I want to go back to doing specifically for all the reasons that I just mentioned. There are so many dining opportunities, whether they be individual snacks or full-blown meals. And one of the ones I think that you should really try and do is dine with Minnie at her holiday dine at Hollywood and Vine back again this year. It's a great way to sort of I think plus up your day or night in the parks, especially now with Fantasmic coming back and all these other different things. Here in this buffet meal at Hollywood and Vine, you don't just see Minnie in her holiday best, but Mickey and Goofy and Pluto. And without going too far, you know what? I'm going to try and do it. And maybe I'll do a dining review of it when I'm there because I haven't been in years. If only there was somebody, anybody who would do it with me. But... Hmm. The characters are great. The decor is awesome because, again, it, it's an extension of these photo opportunities. And they have that. I'm, I'm not sure if it's back again this year. I remember they had this silver tree that looked like it came out of the 40s with peppermint bows and, and green and, and red balls on it. Just from a, a much older, simpler time. And the last time I looked at the menu, I think there was like prime rib and salmon with with a beurre blanc and also buco and mac and cheese with shrimp and turkey and there's a few plant-based items as well and they also have specialty beverages and non-alcoholic beverages and, and obviously a, a kid's menu as well but the last time i was there the food was good the character interactions were great it's not a huge restaurant so you don't feel like you're swallowed up in this sea of people especially when it comes time to visit with the characters and go to some of the photo opportunities they have or when they do the walk-arounds in the restaurant. Hollywood and Vine, I think, as, as a whole, is overlooked even more so during the holidays. And again, you don't have to wait till Christmas time. I believe the holiday dine starts or starts in on November 7th or 8th, somewhere around there. So it's early in the season. So you don't have to necessarily worry about going to Walt Disney World you know, Christmas week or even December in order to participate in a lot of the things we're going to talk about. Only someone would invite me. I'm literally wow. inviting you that right now. That would be fun. Let's do it. You had me at macaroni and cheese, by the way. So. When you come down, I'm going to I'm gonna try and get us a reservation one night. All right. Yeah, it's funny. You, you talk about Sam and all that, and I'm going for the mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's going to be so much fun. I've never done that, so this would be fantastic. Oh, Hollywood Christmas. Oh, let's see. Where am I going to go? Yeah. I see. These are normal things you do, but our own special things. I'm going to talk about the gingerbread houses, which, again, that's top on everyone's list of what to do this year. I'm anxious this year, though, because uh, last year, some of the gingerbread houses were up. Some were still not up. Some might be gone. And uh, I think more are coming back online this year. So I'm anxious to see them. I know the uh, gingerbread house at the Grand Floridian got a 50th anniversary little makeover last mm -hmm. year. So I'm curious if it's going to still be doing that this year. Um, I understand, too, because this I don't think this was here last year. The contemporary gingerbread uh, Mary Blair castle should be back this year, I understand. So. That'll be exciting. That's one of my favorites. I think one of one of the more overlooked gingerbread creations mm -hmm. of Walt Disney World because you don't think of that, but it's fun. It's whimsical. It's it's a fantastic time. The one thing we found out uh, last time we went down there, which was uh, which was fun, as you probably know, you can get gingerbread. You can get gingerbread shingles at the Grand Floridian's Gingerbread House at the Beach Club Carousel. You can pick up some gingerbread goodies. I found out while we were waiting in line talking to the people there. One, the gingerbread is different at each of them. So just because you had one doesn't mean you will have tried the other one. So try them all out. The other thing I found out, which was which was very fun. They're very competitive about their gingerbread. <laughs> so where I, was, where I think I was at the Grand Floridian waiting and I was remarking, oh, yes, we're at the beach club and uh, getting some gingerbread. There. Oh, ours is better. Really? Oh, yeah. You don't want that. You want ours. So, so wait, I never knew to, this. I never going knew to the beach club and you say, hey, the Grand Floridian said, there's, oh, no, no, this is the one. <laughs> so it's fun. So now I sort of feel almost responsible to take up this gauntlet to go yes. for the mm -hmm. gingerbread challenge yes, and try absolutely. the different. 
I want to see one if what you're saying is true, and two if there <laughs> really is a difference and a winner in this overall gingerbread experience. Well, they are different. I mean, definitely last year, and I assume that's the same. Uh, that I can't describe. Like one was more gingerbready, one was more molasses. But they were they were definitely different because I guess it's the chefs at the respective places have their own uh, recipes. So uh, it's fun to do. And hey. If you're going to tell me I got to eat gingerbread at all these places, I'll take one for the team. I'll do it. I, I I've, do I'm it. really excited about this, by the way. <laughs> well, the other thing I'm anxious to see, and I didn't get to see this last year, was the American Adventure gingerbread display. Again, another one that a lot of people might not be aware is there. And it's inside the rotunda. And it's little. it's not like the giant gingerbread house at the Grand Floridian, but... They're gingerbread recreations of like, you know, the Washington Monument, the White House uh, and that sort of thing. I just missed it last year because when we were there, they were just starting to put up the Christmas trees. We were a little bit in November and I kept going to the American Adventure. When's your gingerbread coming up? We don't know. I think next week. <laughs> so, But it did show up and it will be back next year, this year. So uh, I'm anxious to get back and see that because I missed it last year. And that's uh, that's a fun treat to see and see how many pounds of eggs they used and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if they sell gingerbread snacks, but the other ones definitely. So yes, gingerbread, the, the gingerbread tour, we will have to do that. And Well, Tim, let, I want to share something with you system. and this may come. Yes. I, I am not a sweets guy. <laughs> like, I'm, no, what? what? <laughs> you're, but, a, you're a, you're a savory kind but, of guy, but right. I do love gingerbread. I do. Like, I really, really enjoy gingerbread, like with a nice cup of like tea or apple cider or whatever. So I'm really, really excited about this. Something else that I'm not also going to be a shocker. I'm not an athlete. I know you can't tell by looking at this incredibly toned Adonis like physique of mine. (laughs) I am not an athlete, but the next thing I'm going to put on my list can almost be considered an athletic event. If you can't be an athlete, be an athletic supporter. It's from Greece, one of my favorite movies. It doesn't matter. Moving on. The the outside the park holiday thing that almost like you really could make this Tim a holiday tradition for you and your friends or you and your family is to go and play golf, mini golf at Winter oh. Summerland. I love Winter Summerland over at Ty- by, it's right, right by Typhoon Lagoon and Disney Springs. You can take a bus there if you don't have a car. It is a miniature golf experience that has not one, but two specially themed 18-hole golf courses. There is a summer course and there is a winter course. And the story is that Santa sort of built Winter Summerland as this off-season vacation destination for him and more importantly, his elves. And again, going back to this idea of nostalgic, you know, Christmases of old, as you walk through this incredibly well-themed and decorated area, there's like Airstream RVs and sand castles and this winter adventure to the North Hole with icy obstacles and peppermints. And it's real. it's a lot of fun. It's not overly challenging. Like it's a great course to do uh, with friends or families and little kids can enjoy it as well. It's not expensive. I think it's still like $14 for an adult and maybe $12 for kids. You can do one course. You can do both courses. It is a really, really nice way to spend an afternoon or better yet, even an evening outside the parks. Uh, It is a lot of fun. I think a lot of people don't even know that it's there. And like I've gone and done both courses, like with my kids and with friends before, like the summer course has surfboards and sandcastles and the winter course has you know, sort of like your your journey to the North Pole with peppermint and hockey sticks and this drawbridge of a castle. It, like it's really, really cool. And again, at $14 per person, it is a great like value for your money as well. I'm thinking the WDW Radio Winter Summerland Mini Golf challenge so tim that is and i think i may have mentioned this before this is that is actually something that i had planned years ago like i had logos i had the whole thing ready to go and for a variety of reasons i I had to cancel the event before i had before i was able to announce it but i will tell you know what i'm planting my my 
stake in the hole in the right round. I am going to announce the WW Radio Winter Summerland Mini Golf Challenge. I mean, I'm not. I'm, I'm announcing that I'm anna- going to announce it, but you're you're announcing that you're going <laughs> to announce right. it. I love it. Well, if I'm there, by the way, this I'm is in. when and I get I'm myself a ringer. Please. This is when I get myself in trouble when I just sort of announce things <laughs> and then like I'll figure it out later. Uh, let's. <laughs> that's what happened to me on the cruise years ago when I'm like, I got up on stage during like a a thing and I was like. Wait a minute! It's the 40th anniversary of Walt Disney World. I'm going to announce a 40-hour show, and I did a 40-hour live show because I didn't think how insane it was at the time. But the Winter yeah. Summerland Mini Golf Challenge, the Mini Golf Classic, I think is what I called it, the WWE Mini Golf Mini Golf Classic, is going to happen. Stay tuned. Oh, I love it. I'm there. Oh, let's see. See, I have just regular stuff left <laughs> on my list here. There is no regular stuff because it's Disney, and it's so well, much that's fun. That's true. Yeah, I'm going to use this, but I'm going to take the opportunity to do this because one of the things we love to do, we always tell people to do this when you go at Christmas, not even going in the parks, is to just do some resort hopping, whether it's Epcot, which we talked about, going to the board, uh, boardwalk and beach club and checking out the under the sea theme trees and the yacht theme trees. But our favorite is, of course, doing the monorail loop. And, and Lou, I'm gonna, I want to ask you, so... Of the Christmas trees at the Lodge and the Contemporary, if you go outside, and the Grand Floridian and the cute little one they have in the Polynesian. I always ask this to everybody. What what is your favorite Christmas tree of those? Can you say? So my first inclination was to go to Wilderness Lodge because I think (sighs) that tree, that lobby that that entire resort is spectacular during the season. And I'm going to try to not waver away from that. Although I do understand that Grandest, Grandestino Tower supposedly has holiday decorations and I have not seen it for the holidays. Oh. So I'm going to put, yeah, you know what? I'm going to stick with Wilderness Lodge. I'm not even going to pull a loo and mention three other ones like I'm, temp- <laughs> like I'm tempted to. No, I, I I think that's ours too. Well, we're staying there, and I'm I'm looking forward to going there late at night when there's nobody there. The trees are up, the garlands up, everything is lit up. Going down to Roaring Forks, and I, I'm oddly excited to get myself a walnut bacon bunt cake with cream cheese icing. It's Lou. It's got some savory in it. Oh, you you be good. all over that, right? That sounds right. That, <laughs> that too. Weird? I'm not that a sweet guy, but man, that sounds really good. <laughs> but now we love that whether whether it is at the Grand Floridian or Wilderness Lodge to go there, just relax and get a snack from Roaring Fork or Gasparilla Grill, wherever you are, and just enjoying the trees, uh, the music when it's there at the Grand Floridian with the piano player. Um, yeah, we we can spend a whole day resort hopping without ever going to the park and get so much Disney Christmas joy out of it. And we always seem to discover something new every year. Them occasionally, chocolate sculptures will appear at the Grand Floridian and other places, and uh, you know, it's it's fantastic. Even more amazing, Lou. You talked about how Halloween, not Halloween Day, it's Halloween, November first, it's Christmas magically overnight. We've been there the nights when <laughs> there's no tree up. We go to bed, we wake up, and all of a sudden, ah. Oh, it's like, you know, it just miraculously goes up in the middle of the night. The gingerbread houses go up in the middle of the night. So, yeah, that's it's something I'm sure a lot of people do. But it's one of our favorite things to do is just uh, get on that monorail, take a ride around, get to contemporary, get on that boat to the Wilderness Lodge and hang there. Because I'm kind of with you. That's probably my favorite treat, too. And I love that. And I, and I think touring the resorts and and. Sometimes, Tim, even just taking a day, if you want to sort of take a day out of the yeah. parks, because depending on when you go, it can be a, a busy, crowded time of the year. And I've, I've really visited, again, other than Grand Destino recently, all the resorts during the holidays, and each has their own little spin on it. But I want to share one that there's a good chance you've probably never been to before. And it's a shame, mm. because not only is the resort decorated and has special events and all and, but it's Santa's favorite resort 
Santa literally has proclaimed what his favorite resort is. Don't look at me that way. It's the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin. Okay, they call it Santa's favorite resort yes. because for years, um, and I, God, this has probably been going on maybe almost 10 years. They have all kinds of special experiences and entertainment during the holiday season. You can go to Santa's favorite resort.com and find out how you can go and meet Mrs. Claus and her little elf candy clink. Candy cane on special nights. Santa's holiday hangout by the swan pool. Santa comes and arrives, spoiler alert, in this super cool themed golf cart. There is photo opportunities. There are, it's the world's largest chocolate Santa is there. I've seen that. It's <laughs> life size. It's freaky. It's, it's really Great. freaky. It's huge. Um, there is pastry decorating for kids. Um, over at Santa's Holiday Hangout, and it's like $3. Like, it's crazy. There's a Dancing Lake Spectacular. There is, if you're staying there, they ha if you're staying there, there's other special things that they can do for you and your kids. So, for example, like, if you're staying there at Christmas, like, how's Santa going to be able to deliver presents for your kids? It's like, it's Christmas Eve, and there's no chimney if you stop by the concierge, don't tell, don't let your kids hear this. But if you go by the concierge desk on Christmas Eve, you can pick up a copy of Santa's Magic Key to hang on your hotel room door. So it looks like, oh, kids, look, Santa knows he's going to be able to come in. And I mean, it's weird the idea of now Santa breaking into your room, but he comes down your chimney. It doesn't really <laughs> matter. There are um, elves. There is a there's a Christmas story with milk and cookies. There's a beautiful Christmas tree, holiday gifts. They used to have a train that went around the huge tree in the dolphin lobby. And again, you talked about that chocolate Santa display by a, it's like a world champion pastry chef. Uh, his name is like Lauren Bernard or something. Forgive me if I mispronounced his name, but everything in that display is made from chocolate. Uh, lots of different holiday treats in some of the um, restaurants as well, including like Shula's, Blue Zoo, Il Marino, and Amare, which is over at the reserve, which is real, oh, like, it's really, really good. Um, and other things, too. If you are staying at the resort, there's some additional, but you don't have to. You don't need to be staying there in order to take part in Santa's Favorite Resort. If you just go to santasfavoritresort.com, you can find out. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I go every year. I usually I do like a live broadcast from there because... Santa and Mrs. Claus, seeing them on vacation, it they're a they are a lot of fun. Like they are really, really they're they're really fun. <laughs> Don't bother me. I'm on vacation. <laughs> no, they want to be bothered. They're very nice. They're, well, that's they're super, great. super nice. Yeah. Now, hey, speaking of trees, that was always one of my favorite trees. The super gigantic white and blue poinsettia tree. Yeah. That they had. Yep. But I do I do love and I do, maybe you know I, what they're doing this year because they switched over to this. A beautiful doesn't even describe that this glass chandelier that they have uh, in place of that tree, which is stunning. I think it was there last year. I assume it'll be there this year, but I'm not sure. I don't know if you know. Luke, I will go and do the research and find out for you. Check it out. But that I, it's hey, I mean, it's not your traditional Christmas. tree. There is a traditional Christmas tree over on yeah. the side, but that that chandelier I, and calling it a chandelier is such a disservice. It is a work of art. It is absolutely stunning. Yeah. And I love it. So if it's there, I, I want to go over and check it out again because I can't. It's just standing underneath it. It's like it reminds me of and don't I, you've all done this when you have your Christmas tree at home. It's all lit up. It's night and you kind of go underneath it and just lie there and look up and look mm -hmm. at all the Christmas tree lights. Yes, I do that. So. <laughs> so Oh, for my, I, I, you know, I only have one more thing on my list here and it's kind of a, it's, it's, it's not the biggest, boldest Christmas experience you can have, but it's one that I haven't experienced yet. And I am so looking forward to doing this. And this goes back to the overlays that some of the attractions get during Christmas. And this is over at Epcot. And by the way, this year also for the first time, we're doing a, a dinner package for the Candlelight Processional. And uh, my daughter's very excited to see Raul Esparza doing the uh, Candlelight Processional narration this year. So that's fun. But, uh, but we've all seen the Candlelight Processional. Beautiful if you see it, whether you're walking by or you are actually sitting in there. But the one thing I'm looking forward to, last year, I went on one of my favorite attractions, 
don't laugh, living with the land. I actually love it so much. During the day, and as I'm going through, and it's it's in November, I'm seeing Christmas lights. They're not turned on because it's daytime. I'm like, what what is this wondrous thing I'm seeing? And it wasn't until I got home and saw pictures of the uh, living with the land, merry and bright and lights overlay. And I'm looking forward to seeing this for the first time. If you haven't seen this, they basically uh, put Christmas lights and holiday decorations up all throughout living with the land through the boat boat ride, through all the greenhouses. You'll see snowmen and presents and uh, snow sandmen, I should say, and presents and all kinds of decorations. But uh, the the pictures I've seen are stunning. I can't wait to see this in person because it already is one of my favorite attractions oddly enough, but uh, seeing it at Christmas is something I'm really looking forward to. Lou, did you get a chance to see this at all when they were... Yeah. I saw it last year, and I love it. Like, is it I really, stunning? Oh, I, I can't think, wait. You know, I can't wait. Yeah, going at night is... is at, look, Epcot at night during the holidays, beacon of magic during the holidays, like, it's it's really, really nice, and it's, it is sort of a traditional thing that I like to do, and, and I'll often go live or do, like, a short video through there, because they do a really nice job of... of transforming that attraction without changing the attraction it's 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 neat how they did it but you also sort of glossed over something which i think is oh. important and is on my list we when we talk about sort of the quote unquote things you need to do we talk about the the candlelight processional and we've mentioned it multiple times on a number of occasions it, it is a truly special experience that is included with your Epcot admission. You don't need anything else in order to go see that other than your Epcot ticket and patience because you, the lines do get very, very long for the multiple shows that take place at 5.15, 7 o'clock, and 8.30. And there are some folks, Tim, that will line up at 4 o'clock for the 5.15 show. That show's over and they get back in line for the 7 and they get back in line <laughs> for the 8.30 to see the same narrator because it is beautiful and it is breathtaking mm -hmm. and it is incredibly moving and who your narrator is although they may speak the same words and the retelling of the, the 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 christmas story is completely different and it is it is an amazing experience to see the different and how different narrators inject their own personality their own stories into it so i'll just give you a, a quick rundown of some so simu lu cheetah rivera whoopi goldberg isabella rossellini damon john the shark josh gad gloria stefan neil patrick harris is always a fan mm -hmm. favorite mariska hargaday from law and order cal yeah. ripkin jr marie osmond courtney vance angela bassett i just saw Black Panther Wakanda Forever last no night. No spoilers. I'm going to spoil something for you right now. Give her the Oscar. Give oh, okay. her the Oscar. <laughs> she was remarkably, remarkably good. Um, and that's all I'm going to say. But yeah. Okay. So I had watched the Candlelight Processional with a dining package on my list. Ah, there you go. Because, I've never done this before. This is our first Yeah, I think it's a really smart cool. idea because there are a number of restaurants that have a package that includes guaranteed seating in a specific location at the candlelight processional on that same day and a dinner with an appetizer entree or dessert or the buffet were applicable and you can do it at uh Akershus, royal banquet hall beer garden the buffet coral reef garden grill la cellier rose and crowned and their same day dining packages at the regal eagle smokehouse and spice road table they start as low as $40 per person for adults, going up to $100 per person for La Cellier. Most of them run around the $60, $70 mark. So Rose and Crown is $64, Coral Reef is $74. So that's your dinner, that's your dessert, and that's your guaranteed seat. You are also paying for, Tim, you're paying for the luxury and the convenience of not having to wait in line. Think of it as fast pass, sort of Genie Plus for mm. the Candlelight Processional, and I think it's absolutely worth it. Candlelight Processional is probably the one absolute must-do on my list every single year. Well, you throw in some shrimp and grits from the Coral Reef, and I'm there, because that's what I have to look forward to. Did I mention Angela Bassett? 
I think so. Rewind it. See if you. I can't remember if you did. Some of the performances that I have seen from some of the narrators. Look, I'm a crier. I'm fine admitting we're all friends here. Like I will weep. I'm right outwardly. with you. I weep outward outwardly at this because the music is incredible. The 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 choir of of cast members is just in. So so good, and there there is an emotional component. Whether it, and it doesn't matter what your faith, what your beliefs in, what you celebrate or don't, the telling of that story and the music that accompanies it is is one of the hallmark experiences I think in Walt Disney World. Period. I think it's that good. Yeah, and and one of the things that's great about it too, if if you if you didn't have the opportunity or weren't able to get a dinner package or if you're not up for standing in line for you know a long time to get in there it is one of those experiences you can just stumble upon which i've done many times as you're walking around world showcase doing your tour at night and you get to the american adventure and being as it's an open air theater the american gardens theater if you're just casually walking by during a show, you'll get it. You're not going to get an up close glimpse of it, of course, but you'll hear it. You can see it. And under uh, underneath the tree at the American Adventure with all the lights on, even as you're walking by, it's I, I just get this really warm holiday feeling walking by with a candlelight processional going on, even if I didn't if I'm not actually in the audience for that particular show. But uh, you can see it from the promenade, which is. A nice, wonderful, fun surprise as you're walking around at night at uh, World Showcase. And, I, and I'm going to, since I was sort of latching on to your entry there, I, I want to, I'll connect the next thing on my list with that, right? We're, we're going to stay in Epcot. In addition to, so there's a few things that you're learning about me today. So I don't love sweets, but I eat sweets. I'm... Um, not an athlete, certainly. Um, I love my savory foods, and I'm also a crier. I also love scavenger hunts. Like, I really do. I love scavenger hunts. In fact, I I do, I create a scavenger hunt for Walt Disney World um, in different parks and attractions and lands every month for the WW Radio Nation, just in case you're curious, wdwradionation.com slash support. And in Epcot... They have different scavenger hunts for the festivals. Back again this year is the Festival of the Holidays scavenger hunt with Olaf. It is the Olaf Holiday Tradition Expedition scavenger hunt, which is available now through the end of the year. You can purchase a map and stickers. I think it's still $9.99 from different merchandise locations like the Creation Shop, Port of Entry, and World Traveler at the International Gateway. And in order to do the scavenger hunt, you go through the different pavilions and you will find um, you're, you're searching for the, the traditions that Olaf has found at each of the pavilions. Parents, by the way, this is also a good learning experience for your kids and for you. you. So you do that. You put your sticker on when you find it. And then if you complete the scavenger hunt or not, you can bring your map to the creations or world traveler at International Gateway and you can redeem it for a special holiday keepsake. Oh. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Come on. Because I don't think it's been revealed yet, yet this year. Because it changes <laughs> every single year. And as of now, I don't think the 2022 Festival of the Holidays keepsake has been revealed. Tim, this is a lot of fun. It's inexpensive. It's under 10 bucks. You don't have to be a kid to do it. You can give it to your kids so they have something to do. Get off your phone, kids. You can so they have something to do <laughs> while you guys are walking around. If maybe they might be bored in World Showcase, you can do it together, even better as a family, or you can do it alone as a solo traveler or together with your friends. It's just fun going to the festivals, finding Olaf. And I like it here even more so than like the Easter egg hunts because it is tied to the traditions and the culture of each of the countries. So it's it's there's an there's an added sort of benefits and interest level, I think, to to this one um, as opposed to some of the others. I'm in. And I'm trying, I think last year- Even if year, I don't know what the prize is. I think last year they, they gave away, um, they were like frozen themed plates and there was like three different <gasps> ones that you can do. 
And sometimes there's been like pins. There was, um, I don't remember what else they've done in past years. But yeah, last year I think was, there were three different, really nice frozen themed, maybe 10 inch diameter, 12 inch diameter plastic plates. That's all I got. That's it. <laughs> are, are we in honorable you, mention mode now? Are you done? Like, is that it? Are you done? I'm done. Okay. So I had, so these are not honorable mentions. These are actually things on my list because I end, I always end up doing like 10 or 11 on my list just in case. Like I never know <laughs> if we're going to have duplicates or if I change my mind as we're, we're going through it. Speaking of, this isn't a scavenger hunt, but this is something else I think is really, really fun to do because I also try and find things, to him, Tim, that if you notice, I'm not necessarily talking about buy this ticket to Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. Buy this thing, spend this additional money. I also try and find things that you can do for free. Like, especially if you want to take a day outside the parks. It's why we mentioned doing things like going to the resorts, or yes, it's an inexpensive ticket, like going to play miniature golf. I love Disney Springs, period. I love Disney Springs during the <laughs> holidays, period. And back again this year are the themed Christmas trees at Disney Springs. The Christmas tree trail, which they added a number of years ago, used to be somewhat more experiential. It was located in a single location at the far end of Disney Springs with an entrance over by the Earl of Sandwich. What they've done now is they have created, I think that there's probably maybe 30 or so, maybe even more than that, maybe 30 or so, different themed Christmas trees and have scattered them throughout Disney Springs. So it's completely free. You can now view these trees all day long. You don't have to wait until the Christmas tree trail would open at a certain time at night and have sort of a line going through this. And it is almost like a bit of a scavenger hunt. And I think you can, I think Tim, there's also an argument to be made to go and try and find the trees during the day and then go to see them at night when they're lit mm. up. Because during the day, you can really sort of get a sense of the intricacies of some of the ornamentation and decor decoration. But at night, you can see them all lit up and they take on a whole different life. It's not a scavenger hunt because you can actually get a free map from guest services. But wait, there's more. Mm. So the map from guest services has the map of the locations and stickers. And it shows you sort of the theme of whether it's Haunted Mansion, whether it's the Lion King, whether it's Frozen, Moana. I think there was like a, um, I think there was like a pirate themed one, a bell themed one. Um, I know there's a variety of different Christmas tree ones. I think that there's a Black Panther. I know that there was one last year. I think there was one this year as well. If you're able to match all the stickers. So what it does is you have this map and the map is blank. It has just locations with a blank, with sort of a um, a standard Christmas tree to show you where they are. But you have to go and match the theme sticker to where it is. If you get them all correct, if you bring your map back to guest services, you get a special surprise. But wait, there's even more. Because on the opposite side of your map, not only does it show you where you can find some of the seasonal eats and treats, but there's also discount codes and discount uh, barcodes that you can use at some of the shopping locations and dining locations for like 25% off, like food and merchandise. Wow. I'm not kidding. It's true. Wow. Did I mention that it's free? Oh, it is completely yeah. free. It is a lot of, again... You can do it just as you're walking around. You can do it as sort of this thing to do while you're there. I think it really is. Um, it's a lot of fun. And, and it is. it is. It's almost sort of like a must do. Because did I mention the fact that I love Disney Springs? In passing. Yeah. Maybe once or twice. I didn't even, yeah. I didn't even mention the boathouse when I said that too. No. I, you know what? I was wondering <laughs> if you were going to get through this show without mentioning the boathouse. Yeah, By the way, did. I haven't mentioned everything. food, but... Something else that I put on my list is... <laughs> Wait, you have mentioned food. I mean? didn't mention... I don't remember mentioning food. At, not at all. Okay. Maybe twice. Okay. <clears throat> Create your own, right? We're talking about things that sort of Disney offers and helps sort of guide you through. I think there's also a fun way for you to create your own foodie tour and your own top 10 or your top five list. There's a reason why we didn't get into... 
the holiday treats and sweets and drinks that are themed because there are so, so many throughout the parks, resorts, restaurants, Disney Springs. There are dozens, if not hundreds of different holiday themed sweets and treats. You can't do them all. I may try because I'm a researcher at heart and I'm a giver and I'm doing it for you. But I think if you find the thing that you like or the things that you like, create your own list. Try and make your own list oh. of top 10 holiday sweets, top 10 holiday cookies, cupcakes, adult beverages, whatever it is. Make it a game. Share it on social. Go and do your quote unquote research like I do. Share it on social. Come to the clubhouse on Facebook, the www.radio.com slash clubhouse. Share your top five, top 10, whatever, holiday themed meal items, holiday themed cookies, holiday themed you know, hot chocolates, whatever I mean. And you know what? Maybe, wait, I'll put this out there without thinking about it. If you come up with some amazing creative idea and list, maybe we'll do it together on the show. <gasps> what oh. could possibly go wrong? Nothing could go wrong. Right. And the last thing on my list, <laughs> before I get to just a couple of very, 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 very quick honorable mentions, is... You may be listening and saying, Mangello, Foster, what if I can't get to Walt Disney World? What if I just can't yeah. get there this year? What if I just, I just can't do it? Are there ways to sort of bring some of this Disney magic at home? Yes. Throughout the year on Wednesday nights, I, I can continue to do my WW Radio live show. I will be, I'm going to try and do a lot of the live shows over the next few weeks from the parks and resorts so I can bring it to you best I can. But... If you want to bring some Disney magic at home and maybe even Tim Foster, make a new friend and bring some Disney magic of your own to others, I have something for you. Oh, I invite you, not if you dare, but if you like, to join our WW Radio annual ornament exchange. Every year for the past, gosh, we've probably been doing this maybe seven years, five, seven years, uh, thanks to someone in the community. We call her Shannon the Elf. Um, if you want to participate in the ornament exchange, all you have to do is sign up and then you purchase or make a Disney-themed ornament, less than $20, right? And then send it to this randomly selected other member of the nation family, of the, of the WRO family by December 5th. They get an ornament, you will get an ornament as well, and then, you know, it helps sort of share some of that extra Disney spirit of the season. And if you want to find out more, you can go to the WDW Radio blog or go to wdwradiocom slash exchange 2022 and find out how you can sign up. It is so much fun. You never know what you're going to get. You never know who you might meet and see some of the creativity from people. Some people, Tim, go all out and they make their own ornaments and write letters. And it's just such a nice, uh -huh. simple Fun I way to bring people. Maybe Timmy Foster will sign up this year. I, I think I might. That sounds like fun. Oh my I gosh! I hope I get Timmy Foster in the, uh, in the random ornament exchange. Wait, wait, I won't know who I'm getting though. You're right? not going to know who you're getting. I mean, you'll know. I mean, obviously, our elf will let you know because uh, you have to sign up by November 18th. By the way, and the elf will magically match you up. You will get that person's name and address, and then you will oh, send I love, them their ornament. I, I want to make a Lumangello ornament, but I want to be <laughs> careful. <laughs> My legal team is standing by just in case. Um, Bring it. A couple of very, very, very <laughs> quick honorable mentions because they're new this year. Space Mountain Holiday Run. There's a new yeah. holiday overlay <laughs> at Space Mountain. Um, I don't know if you can see that outside of Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. I'm very curious to see myself. And I'm very, very excited for the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday overlay, which is new this year. There's oh. some holiday. There's a new holiday single or jingle bringing joy to Terra and Xandar. And I'm very, very curious to see what that might be. And what else? That's it. Oh, you know what? You, it's too late to join ours, but just in a couple of weeks, Tim, I'm doing my very first group WW Radio Very Merry Time Cruise on December 5th. If you've never taken a themed cruise on Disney Cruise Line, do it. Um, they are some of 
the best cruises. They also do ones for Halloween. They're decorated. They're special events. And then we do a lot of things specifically for a group. Like we have a white elephant gift exchange, an ugly sweater contest, group dining, some after hours, very special events, which I'm not going to say because I have to keep it a surprise. Pajama parties and pin tradings. If you go to our events page again at www.radio.com slash events, you can find it. I, I really, really am super excited for this and need to figure out what my ugly sweater is going to be. And the last thing I will leave you with is when to go. And because as you get closer to Christmas, it not only gets more expensive, more difficult to get a room, but more crowded. I think the first two weeks of December have always been sort of that sweet spot and that, that secret has obviously gotten out uh, over the yeah. past few <laughs> years. The week before Thanksgiving is is pretty good too because a lot of people wait until Thanksgiving, but not all of the festival of the holidays events and activities start until after Thanksgiving. So keep that in mind in terms of if the entertainment at Epcot and some of those things is important to you, Use that in your decision-making process. It is why having a travel agent like Mouse Fan Travel can help you with that um, as well. And there's one last thing I will say, but anything else that you want to add, Timmy Foster, to our list or in your case that you want to plug? Plug? I can (laughs) plug things. I don't know. All I dealing with Christmas, since we're going a couple weeks, I'm sure I'm going to find some new things I've never seen before whether they're new or new to me so we'll re- i'll report on those when we come back but um hey if we're plugging things uh we have our new uh, for for perfect for holiday giving our epcot 40th anniversary keepsake book is here it has arrived we have that we also have the 50th anniversary keepsake book which are Great by themselves or make for a great pair. We have a new Christmas pin coming out that we're going to be announcing in a week or two and a new Halloween pin we put out. And of course, there's the mag- magazine itself. Our winter issue is out. A great Christmas gift, but you can find all of this at celebrationspress.com. And we're going to be putting some Halloween gift bundles together in the coming weeks. So keep an eye out for that. Maybe I'll put Tim on the spot and say, you know, it'd be really cool, Tim. Is yeah. if one week I gave away as a trivia contest prize a little Celebrations Magazine holiday gift bundle. I mean, I'll buy Absolutely. it from you if I have to, but wouldn't that be a nice gift to give someone? It would be this such a great season? gift that I'll t- we're going to do it. Let's do it. Maybe Timmy Foster will even sign it. Like, um, yes. Absolutely. I mean, unless you don't want Timmy Foster. Do right? maybe, you know, maybe you don't want Timmy Foster to <laughs> sign it. Um, I will share I love it. And yeah, you can obviously find it. all these things at guide to the magic.com. I'll link to it in the show notes. Um, you know, I want to. I'm hesitating because th- this might be stupid and maybe I'll just cut this out, even though I don't really edit <laughs> this at all, obviously. Um, but I, I want to admit something personal because we're all friends here and I love you and I trust you. You not just you, Tim, but you who's listening. Um I loved Christmas as a kid. Like, I loved Christmas as a kid. I remember, like, and again, because I know kids are listening, I'm not going to share too much, but I loved going to my grandparents and and pretending to go to sleep at at midnight for for Santa Claus to come and just spending hours opening presents and then having sausage, like, at, at, you know, two o'clock in the morning. But as I got older, um, for whatever reason, I I, I didn't love Christmas as much. I, I don't know what happened. There's no sort of you know, dramatic, traumatic thing that happened to me. But for whatever reason, I started to sort of move away from my love of Christmas. But Disney World made me love Christmas again. And there is something very powerful and very moving and special about being here during the holidays. I don't know what it is. If if you get it, you get me, you get it. If you think I'm a crazy person, get in line you're not the first but I, I there is there there's something special about this place which is why i still love it watch why i still get excited but there's something even more so about the holidays at walt disney world and like now i can't imagine not visiting here every single year not just because i live here but i think because Christmas and the holidays and and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and and all festivists, whatever it is, being celebrated here that the time of the year, not even necessarily that single day, 
makes this very special place even more extraordinary. And I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I'm grateful for it and it's meaningful to me and I'm sure I am not the only person out there. But I do want to hear from you. I already heard from you, Tim, not you. But you, our friend who's listening, how do you like to celebrate the holidays in Walt Disney World? What is your family or personal tradition when you come here? Where do you stay? What do you like to eat? What do you like to do? Where do you go play? Do you go swimming, even though it's 50 degrees out, like so many other people do um, when they come here? Like, I see kids like, hey, man, I'm on vacation. I'm going swimming. It doesn't matter. Is it living with the land? Is it the Jingle Cruise? Is it gingerbread? Is it seeing Santa? Is it trees? What is it for you? And then some of the ways that you like to go and celebrate the holidays in Walt Disney World. Come be part of the community and the conversation and the WW Radio family over in the clubhouse on Facebook at www.radio.com slash clubhouse. I will post that question there and I would really love to hear your thoughts and your answer. Better yet, instead of just posting it there, call the voicemail 407-900-9391. That's 407 900 WDW1, and I will play it on the show because I love you. I am grateful for you and you, Timmy Foster. I got all the holiday feels going on, even though it's like November 11th and 85 degrees in Orlando. I'm feeling all the spirit of Christmas, and it has nothing to do with presents. It has nothing to do with family. It just has to do with friendship and family and love. And somebody give me a hug. I just need a hug. I uh, Lou, Lou. <laughs> Well, I'm I'll in try. my office by myself and my arms are stretched out like, come on, somebody give me a hug. I don't know what I'm waiting for and you can't see it. I don't know why I'm embarrassing myself. And there you go. <laughs> That's why we love you. Favorite holiday food in Walt Disney World. Go. Outside of Walt Disney World. Favorite holiday food at home. What's the thing that you have to have during the holidays? Peanut butter fudge. What, homemade what? that I make by myself in, Wait, in Christmas shapes. First, first of all, you need to send me some. Well, peanut yeah, butter, peanut butter fudge. Yeah, I don't know. You put me on the spot, Chris. <laughs> uh, 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 da, oh, oh, <laughs> Reese's peanut butter Christmas trees, best candy ever. There's there a theme. Go. There's a clearly a recurring theme. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the sweet. You're the savior. time for our Walt Disney World Trivia Question of the Week, where you can test your knowledge of how well you know Walt Disney World Trivia History, or see how well you pay attention to the details. If you think you know the answer, you can enter for a chance to win a Disney prize package. And this week's trivia contest is once again brought to you by you. And what I mean by that is as part of the WW Radio Nation, you help bring every episode of the show to life, every live broadcast, the contest, the giveaways. They're all thanks to you and by, for, with, and about you and you can find out how you can help the show for as little as a dollar a month and get exclusive rewards every month like scavenger hunts trivia quests group video calls access to our private facebook group shirts stickers monthly care packages early access and discounts to special events and much more i appreciate you and the support and the love and the help that you give to the show and i love being able to give back to you and say thank you each and every month. I want to quickly thank some new and longtime members of the Nation family, including John Goldsworthy, Joey Davidson, Audrey Kirk, Chris Ann Vigliotti, Erica Bennett, Dawn Lee, and Casey Potts. If you want to find out how you can help the show and our Dream Team project, which benefits the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America, please visit www.radio.com slash support. Now, before we get to this week's question, we're going to go back, review last week's, and select our winner. So last week, I asked you to identify where in Walt Disney World you can hear this phrase. You know what? Rather than me say it or, God forbid, sing it, I'm going to play it for you instead. All the guys who turn me on, turn me down. Nothing works for me that I've found. It's the same way everywhere I see. Nothing ever seems. That is, of course, those little sunbonnets from the Sunshine State, Bunny, Bubbles, and Beulah. They are the sunbonnets from the Country Bear Jamboree. Aren't you glad I didn't try and sing that? Anyway, I took all the correct entries. 
randomly selected one, and last week you were playing for a WWE Radio mug, a brand new pin, and a mystery prize, and last week's winner randomly selected is Brooke Austin. So, Brooke, congratulations. I have your address. I'll get your prize packet out to you right away. If you played last week and didn't win, that's okay, because here's your next chance to enter in this week's Christmas-themed Walt Disney World Trivia Challenge. So this week, I want you to tell me, what was the name of the holiday parade that ran from 2004 to 2007 at the Disney MGM Studios? And I'll give you a little bit of a hint. In the segment, we talked about Disney MGM, Disney's Hollywood Studios, and the sense of nostalgia around Christmas. This parade definitely embodied that sense of what was old is new again. I'm not sure if that's helpful or cryptically confusing. But anyway, you have until Sunday, November 20th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern to go to www.radio.com. Click on this week's podcast. Use the form there. And this week, since we're talking about the spirit of the season and Christmas, I'm going to send you an early Christmas slash Hanukkah slash Kwanzaa slash Festivus present. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is because I don't know exactly where it is, because I'm going to do a little Christmas shopping for you for this week's trivia contest prize. So good luck and have fun. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in this and every week. I'd love to hear your favorite way or place or thing to eat during the holidays at Walt Disney World. Come be part of the community and conversation over in the WW Radio Clubhouse at www.radio.com slash clubhouse. That is our group over on Facebook. More importantly, it is fun, family-friendly, and incredibly welcoming. You can also connect and talk with me elsewhere on social. I am at Lou Mangiello on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And please be sure to like the WW Radio page on Facebook and turn on notifications there and the clubhouse. This way you don't miss anything, including our live broadcasts every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, as well as other live broadcasts throughout the week and from special events. Speaking of events, check out our events page at www.radio.com slash events so you can find out about our next meet of the month in Walt Disney World, upcoming group events and cruises. And if you have a question you want me to answer on the air, you can email me, lou, at www.radio.com or be heard on the air. Share your thoughts about this week's episode and your ways to celebrate holidays in Walt Disney World or even call from the parks just with a hello at 407-900-9391. That's 407 407- 900 WDW1. And because I'm so grateful for everything that you've done and given to me, I want to try and give back to you. Please visit loumangelo.com to find out how I can come to speak to your conference, event, business, or school. Work with me one-on-one so I can help you try and build your business and brand. Join our weekly Tuesday night mastermind group. We now have just one spot left. And or attend one of my Momentum events, including my weekend workshop in Walt Disney World or one of my Momentum retreats. Again, to find out more and set up a call, visit loumangelo.com. And if you're planning your next vacation to any destination, Disney or otherwise, please go and visit mousefantravel.com for all your vacation planning needs. It's who I recommend because it's who I've used and trusted for more than 15 years to help you plan a truly magical vacation that you will not forget and it all comes at no cost to you. Again, visit them over at mousefantravel.com. And as always, my friend, and you are my friend, whether we have met yet or not, all I ask is that if you like the show, Please help spread the word. Tell others about the show. Share a link to this or your favorite episode on social. Tag me at Lou Mangiello. And please take just a couple of seconds to rate and review the show over in Spotify Podcasts or Apple Podcasts. I want to thank some recent reviewers like Andy Kay, who says it's fun, educational, and comforting. Lou and his guests know their Disney stuff. I've learned so many amazing facts from the podcast, and it gets me ready for my next trip. I also find Lou's voice and personality very comforting. Perfect to listen to when you want to sit back and relax. Andy K, I have a huge smile on my face. I've never heard somebody describe the show the way before, so thank you very much. And finally, my friend, and you are my friend, whether you have met yet or not, and I hope to meet you at a future event in the parks or even online, please don't forget to choose the good, to find the good in everything and every one that you encounter, because every day might not be good, but there's something good in every day. Every person might not be good, but there's something good in every person. All you have to do is look for it. Be the positive light. Be the positive change. And I hope that this truly is your best week ever. If there's ever anything I can do for you, please reach out and let me know. I love and appreciate you. So until next time, see ya. Hello, it's Elizabeth from Massachusetts. 
Um, I'm doing some serious homework right now, trying to get through every episode. I'm still doing it, and I'm actually getting really, really close, because I've kind of been doing it from both ends. Um, but I just listened to episode 441, which was a listener email, so some of my favorite. I love answering the questions along with you and Becky. Um, but the questions for it were, which is, what is your favorite Disney dragon? Mine is Figment. End of story. Love him. Um, everything that he represents and that he's the mascot of Epcot, and I just love how funny it is, um, and the history behind him. Uh, number two, what is a restaurant that I've actually never tried but would love to or it's, like, first on my list? Um, mine's actually at Disney Springs. I've never been to Morimoto, and I would love to get there eventually. Um, it's funny when you start, like, listing all the restaurants that you actually have not been to that it kind of starts to add up because you keep going back to your favorites every time you go. So, yeah, hope everyone's having a magical week. It is Monday here in Massachusetts. And, yeah, uh, be magical, stay magical, make someone else's day magical, and I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye. Hey, Lou. It's Christine Morrison from Flower Town, Pennsylvania. And I'm sitting here listening to you doing your latest podcast, the Top Ten Rethemings. And I had to, um, with little Timmy Foster, who I love, I had to stop and just, like, tell you what I was thinking before I forget what I was thinking. So somewhere in Tomorrowland, there's two movies that we need to incorporate. I agree with Big Hero 6. Love that film. But Meet the Robinsons, somewhere, somehow, it it relates back to Walt and his ideas and wants. And it's just a fantastic movie. And then Treasure Planet. So I was thinking, you know, how they themed the movie, the movies, the bathrooms to Tangled, maybe they could do some sort of theming of bathrooms or a snack cart to Treasure Planet somehow. Just to incorporate that. And then either we're Stitch or Last Florida, they have to do something with Meet the Robinsons. I've been waiting for that. And I had a thought for your Ugly Duckling. Um, right next to, I guess it's the Hall of Presidents, there's this little rinky-dink, I guess they used to serve uh, baked potatoes there. There's, like, this little snack station, which you can get, like, drinks and Doritos and chips, and there's nothing great about it. You could make that a little, like, walk-up, ugly duckling-themed little refreshment. I know they don't really have bars in Magic Kingdom, but theme that to the ugly duckling. That would be really cool. Um, but I am loving, I'm loving this episode. I love to reimagine spaces and think about Timmy's idea for the transportation center is fantastic. That is an amazing space that they, they need to do something with because he's absolutely right. For some people, that is their entrance to the parks and it's bland and just this. So they need to do something with it. There's so many possibilities. It could be absolutely amazing. Anyway, that's that. Back to the show. And everybody make somebody smile. Hopefully, Lou is live tonight. It's Wednesday. And I'll see you all in the book. Bye. Hello, Lou Mangiello. It's Darlene Yagi, formerly of West Seneca, New York. And I'm just calling in to say that you are only, like, three weeks away from your cruise for the Christmas time on The Wish. I wish I was going, <laughs> but I can't this time. And then you are now only like six months away from, I believe, let's see, uh, we're in November, January, March, April. Oh, five months away from the Bermuda cruise. You guys are going to have a blast. Can't wait to hear all about these things. And then you have a Wyoming trip, I think, in the future, too. So, Stay safe, have a great holiday, um, and I'll talk to you real soon. Love and hugs. Clark, that's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year.